Thursday's episode of your daily source for fantasy hockey news unveils all of the news from around the NHL that you need to know, including a showcase on this central division with a number of teams that need to be discussed, Jets, Wild, and otherwise. Let's tap in and let's get this paper. Your Locked On Fantasy Hockey, your daily podcast on fantasy hockey. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Fantasy fanatics, degenerate gamblers, and NHL cats. Stand up, unite, it's your show, your daily source for fantasy hockey and betting breakdowns, the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast. And I am joined, as always, by my distinguished co-host, Mr. Steele Roden. On this side of the microphone, it's your boy, Big Flip Livingstone, holding it down for all of our everydayers, showing us that love, making us your first listen every single day. We wouldn't be here without y'all and the support you have for the pod, so we got to give you that love. Also, today's episode is brought to you by our friends at Game Time. Download the Game Time app. Create an account and use code locked on NHL for 20 bucks off your first purchase. Terms apply. Download Game Time today. What time is it? It's game time. Steel, it's also time for me to probably take a few robotus in here. Your boy's been struggling big time, but I haven't been slacking on the uptake for what's going on in this NHL. And we're going to talk about a lot of angles on today's episode and somehow keep to our mantra of getting you guys in and out in 30 minutes. That's what we do. Fantasy news, updates, injuries, and of course, Daily betting breakdowns, 30 minutes in and out. If you're feeling it, smash that subscribe button. Drop us that five-star review. It means the world to both Steele and I. Over to you, Mr. Roden. I know I'm taking up a lot of time. (laughs) Mr. Robert Thomas, injury, wild, jet, central showcase. Wherever you want to go, I'm ready to take it there. Yeah, Robert Thomas going down at least for six weeks with a fractured uh, fractured ankle for the St. Louis Blues. And I know a lot of people were leaving comments on our on our Monday episode for waiver wire targets talking about, is it time maybe to potentially drop Thomas for Tom Wilson? We were talking about Tom Wilson hyping him up. We said, no, Thomas is a special player. He's going to mm. be a playmaker. He's going to continue to get his in the offensive zone. It's time to put Robert Thomas on the injured reserve roster spot mm. for your fantasy team. He's injured for the next six weeks. They're going to reevaluate the injury in that six week period uh, at the end of the six week period, like I said. So put him on the IR. Go pick up Tom Wilson if he's still available or any of those other guys that oh. we talked about Casey Middlestat, uh, Ross Colton, those type of players, if they're still available in your leagues while Robert Thomas uh, deals with this injury right now. But the St. Louis Blues team is off to an okay start so far. They're four three and zero on the season. Um, some bright spots, like uh, some bright spots. Obviously, Thomas getting his with one goal, six points on the year. Jordan Cairo, who's got seven points. The the surprising player was uh, the new addition to their team, who was offer sheeted. Philip Broberg, six points on fire, uh, on fire right now. Six points in seven games. He's a plus mm-hmm. five. He's got seven shots on net, five blocks, six hits. So that is a very strong takeaway. Uh, of the type of player that we're seeing from Broberg right now uh, mm. with the St. Louis Blues, getting this opportunity uh, in a new organization, getting lots of minutes, just under 20 minutes of average ice time for that player. But obviously with Robert Thomas going down, this is, might give some uh, some more time, some more opportunities, some other players like Jake Neighbors, Brandon Saad getting in that top line mix, Alexander yes. Texier, uh, Texier also getting into the top six now. So maybe look towards those, play- uh, those players to fill out that position with Robert Thomas down right now. But mm. obviously it's a significant loss for your fancy team with him in the, with him injured. And to provide a little bit of context, he takes a shot off the ankle. Neil Pionk yeah. obviously going to be reevaluated in six weeks. In some format, Steel, if you were a team that was struggling and you were one of those people in the comments, shout out to everyone dropping comments, DMs, we're always here for y'all. Um, this is one of those situations that depending on the format of your league, like if it's a much of a shallower league, not as many GMs, and you have a lot of other waiver wire options out there and not too many bench options, 
you might be actually looking at dropping Robert Thomas right now if you don't have an IR slot. It's that situation. Most angles, you'd want to stash this man. He's going to come back and continue to what do what he's done, and that's six points in seven games. It's just very intriguing because what's hold true about this player is what you and I have been saying now for the better part of three years. Say it with me now. Why is the man not shooting the puck yeah. more often? 12 shots on net in seven games for me feels criminal for this player, Steele. Considering how good, and I know you'll back me it up is criminal. This, you've seen this guy play firsthand. He has a good release, underrated shot, and all the tools to be, a, aside from a fantasy stud, <laughs> a stud on the ice. So yeah. six points in seven games, a top line center. We got to come on here and talk about his absence. I got to talk about that he's eating over 20 minutes of ice time per night, and this is going to be a tricky one to fill the hole. But I'll also say this for the St. Louis Blues, because it's going to be tricky for them to make up for this uh, absence of his offense. This is a team. I'm struggling real bad right now to bring up. The <laughs> Here we go. Shout out to Robitussin. 25th in the NHL on the power play right now, Steele. They are not good at producing goals, especially with that man advantage. And there goes your number one center. I've yeah. got concerns about this St. Louis Blues team when it comes to their offensive depth. And yes, in the meantime, you mentioned the players that are going to slot in there. It's going to be Saad, Shen, and neighbors up on that top line. Got to take a look there. There's by default. Those are the players that are going to get a look. But when you're taking a look, and that's what we're going to do on the rest of today's episode, at the rest of this division around them, you got to be a little bit worried as the St. Louis Blues Club when you see the Jets going off, the Wild going off, the Stars are still there, the Utah Hockey Club, and we haven't even started about the Colorado Avalanche. <laughs> or the it's a big division right now. It's a busy division. Over to you, because I know I've been rambling a little bit. All I got to say is, Robert Thomas, fantasy-wise, tap into Monday's waiver wire. We'll have some options there. You know who's going to slot in for now. I don't know what you think about this deal, but if he doesn't come back sooner than later, they are not deep enough offensively to come back from this. No, they're not. And again, like they've been okay to start off the season. They're four, three, and oh, Joel Hoffer's actually been the guy they've been running with, even though uh, Bennington's had more starts than him. He's had four, uh, four, just four starts to start the season. But Joel Hoffer is three, oh, and oh, on the season with a 932 save percentage. He's been getting after it so far this season. So we got to mention that as well. But mm -hmm. it, you, you do have to have in the back of your mind that this could be very detrimental to the St. Louis Blues early on in the season. If Thomas, again, if, they're going to reevaluate in six weeks. If it's even longer than six weeks, who knows how bad it's going to be for the St. Louis mm -hmm. Blues because this actually might be the toughest division in the National Hockey League. I know we said the Atlantic, Whoa. but right now it's Whoa. the Central. They're getting after it right now. We're going to talk about the Minnesota Wild. We're going to talk about the Winnipeg Jets coming up after the break. And, of course, at the end of the episode, big-time mm. bets, nine games on the board for Thursday night. We're going to get to all that and more. But first, this episode is brought to you by a very special sponsor here, Flip. Uh, yes, it is, Mr. Roden. It's brought to you by our friends at FanDuel Sportsbook. NFL fans, you better kick off this season with a big return on FanDuel. That's America's number one sportsbook. When you get a hunch in the middle of the game, you can check out the latest stats, live play-by-play, -play, and so much more on the same page where you place your bets. To get started, 200 bucks in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 wager. That's FanDuel.com, America's number one sportsbook. And thank you so much for making the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Pod your first listen every single day. Continue to smash that subscribe button, the follow button, leave a five-star review. Flip and I appreciate mm. all that love and support you show us Monday through Friday, 7 o'clock yeah. in the morning is when you can find our episodes. Continuing the Central Division Showcase Showdown, however you want to put it. These teams have been getting after it this season. I put a tweet out there. There's That's your favorite teams. saying for this past week, by the way. I like it. We're getting after it. That's yeah. what we do here on the Lockdown nah, like Hockey Pod. And, and look, so if they, uh, the Central Division teams have been getting after it too because I put mm. a tweet out yesterday. There's four teams left in the NHL that have not lost in regulation. The uh, Winnipeg Jets are 6-0-0. The Minnesota Wild are 4-0-2. Mm. And, and then you've got mm. the Calgary Flames and the New York Rangers who have yet to lose in regulation as well. Mm. The Minnesota Wild, though, very surprising start. You know, we talked about them being 
one of those average mediocre teams are always sort of there, but never good enough to really do anything or mm -hmm. run, uh, go deep into the postseason. They started off slow last year. They start off way better this year. I need to talk about them. I need to get this off my Please. chest. This might be the pure definition of sleeper build. Minnesota Wild are just so good right now, and they're getting a lot done from those depth guys, guys uh, that were, you know, not really producing as much last year. They're getting help mm. on the blue line from names you wouldn't really think about or look at twice. Jacob Middleton, four points in six games. The Duster, 22 blocks, 10 hits, seven shots on net. The guy I really want to talk about, though, right now, obviously, Kaprizov is my boy. Matt Boldy's been getting after it as well. I need to talk about Marco Rossi. He oh. has been really, really good, and that's something they lacked last year. I know even, even last year, uh, 40 points in 82 games in his rookie season, his first or his first full season in the National Hockey League is nothing to uh, slouch over at all. But six mm -hmm. points in six games for Marco Rossi. He's on that first line right now with Matt Zuccarello and Kirill Kaprizov, so he's getting after it. When you talk about fantasy hockey right now, you know, blocks and hits, that's not part of his game, but he had 146 or 150 shots last season. I expect that number to go up significantly. He's getting some first power play opportunity. He's playing on that first line, again, with Kaprizov and Zuccarello. And at the age of 37, by the way, he still mm. looks like a mm. kid out there. He's absolutely flying, playmaking. He's got four goals on the season, regardless of that. Marco mm. Rossi, he's owned at 11% right now on Yahoo. I think that mm. is definitely someone that I'll be taking a look at and talking about yeah. more on Monday's waiver wire coming up next week, but got to talk about Marco Rossi and I'll leave, I'll leave this player for you. Cause I know who you want to talk about. Thank you very much. Good sir. And I appreciate that. Cause that's what good teammates do. They tee <laughs> it up for each other. And that's what a good goaltender does. Yes. And Philip Gustafson. Look, we talked about Marco Rossi. I think actually both of us highlighted him coming into this season. Yeah. And you know, I leaned on Philip Gustafson because I got him in both of our listener leagues, Mr. Roden. And if it not for that, I would probably be heavy behind the eight ball already because I'm not trying to come out here and toot my own horn. But a 4-0-1 record, a 9.52 save percentage, a 1.40 goals I love it. average. All of those things are not only going to put the pause on the wall stat angle for a few minutes here. Yeah. They're also going to put a focus on a goaltender in Gustafson that has been a big reason why this team is six. I'm not going to say carrying this team because, you know, Kill Bill's getting his. You mentioned Rossi. We know Boldy is final, not finally, but he is now the player that we expected. Showing him to some be. consistency with his game. I think that's there what think. you yeah. go. But I'll say this about this Minnesota Wild team steal, and I don't, not to just, you know, deflate things and bring them back to level. <laughs> Blue Jackets, they beat two close games against the Jets and Kraken. Then they beat the Blues, the Blue Jackets again fairly soft schedule however the last victory 5-1 against the reigning cup champions is something to read into a whole yeah. lot more so i needed to come on here and just try and uh temper expectations a little bit for uh my boy uh mr wild Roden over here <laughs> however undefeated Justin, undefeated Justin in regulation. fantasy wise right now needs to be paid attention to yeah. the peripheral pieces on the Minnesota Wild should also be paid attention to when teams are on heaters. You need to be doing this. Those numbers in a 4-0-1 record are speaking for themselves. However, when you also look in this division steal, I don't know what your thoughts are on what's cooking. And also, wait, before we even get to the next team we want to talk about. Yeah, I, I got some more about the, the Wild as well. Okay, good. Then let me just throw out two updates. Dursey out the rest of the season potentially for Utah and Marino. Out in the near future, that's going to bring in Maverick Lamoureux, recalled from Tucson in the American Hockey League. This is a player that was a high draft pick, and I yeah. think that he – so first round, 29th overall, you got to be taking a look in Keeper Dynasty Leagues. I don't want to get off on a tangent, but we're on this Central Division Showcase. Back to you for the wild, Dursey, and obviously these holes on the blue line concerning for Utah. Back over to you for the rest of this Minnesota breakdown, and then let's shift clubs. Yeah, tough loss for the Utah Hockey Club, obviously, with those two players going down for potentially the remainder of the season. Obviously, with Thursday, it's uh, pretty significant, and uh, I believe Marino having back surgery. So two significant injuries and losses to that organization. But real quickly on the Minnesota Wild, because I know you touched on them, uh, on their special teams. Power play has been phenomenal. They are top five in the power play uh, in the – in the, on the man advantage right now at rocking at a 33%, just over 33% as well. 
just behind Vegas, Colorado, Ottawa actually in the mix as well, and the Winnipeg Jets, both those two Canadian teams over 40% on the power play. Penalty kill, it's been better than last year, but they're still closer to the bottom of the league, just rocking at 75% on the penalty kill. So that needs to be better. The one thing, uh, again, before we switch over to the Winnipeg Jets, Mm -hmm. the one thing that the Minnesota Wild, and they're they're very fortunate to have not lost a game in regulation and to have been so good to start this season, the takeaway to giveaway ratio is disgusting. Mm. 25 takeaways to 90 giveaways. And Kaprizov Whoa. has actually been the biggest culprit of anybody on this team mm. with 12 giveaways on the season with only one takeaway. So they need to clean up definitely in the neutral zone. Some of their passes need to make things a little bit tighter with their breakouts and uh, th- those uh, those uh, passing plays in the neutral zone as well. But mm. that's something I wanted to touch on. They're very lucky to be uh, they're they're pretty fortunate to be 4-0-2 on the season so far. They've got some really good play from their goaltending, which has helped mm-hmm. out a lot, like you said. Yeah. The giveaway to takeaway ratio is uh, is very gross to see right now, so they definitely need to clean that up. But mm-hmm. Winnipeg Jets, let's move over to the top team in the National let's. Hockey League, top team in the Central Division, 6-0-0. Hasn't lost a game this year so far. What are your thoughts on them? Because this team, we couldn't put our finger on mm-hmm. what was going to happen. And once again, another team, another team proven at least me wrong. I know you had them pretty high up last year, but they're 6 0 0. They haven't lost a game. I'll put my finger on it for you right now, Steele. They have a plus 17 goal differential. That's only second to the New York Rangers in the entire NHL. And I'll put my second finger on the main reason. And it uh, it's Connor Hellebuck. 5 0 and 0. 1.40 goals against and a 948 save percentage. And I know there's been some other reasons here. We've spoken about some of the standouts on the on the forward group. Uh, Neil Pionk's looked pretty good. Cole yeah, Perfetti's really chipping good. in. Mark Shifley's been there. This is the guy. This is the number one fantasy netminder that you have stood by for a number of seasons. Shesterkin and him right now, for me, it's a neck and neck race. They are both unbelievable. Um, but when you have a goaltender this good, it doesn't surprise me that you've taken six straight victories. And I guess what I really want to say is my finger is still uncertain on how to label this squad. It is six games and yeah, it's impressive and we should talk about it and we should be kind of fired up for it. Steel Nikolai Ehlers has been chipping in as well. That's been a big question mark. Look, big six, nothing resounding win to open the season. Then you beat the Blackhawks, the Wild, and the Sharks. Ho-hum. Penguins and Blues. Okay, let's see what they do over these next stretch of games. I know they head out on the road for a little while. Then we can really put our finger on it. But for now, you got to be riding all those peripheral pieces that you can get a hand on. Connor Hellebuck, though, I think he's making you look good right now. Yeah, I mean, he looks. He makes everyone look good because he makes his teammates look good. He makes the organization True. look good. He's just been that good. And as much as I love Connor Hellebuck, to me, still the number one fantasy hockey goaltender, and I give him a lot of praise. I can't give him all the credit. I actually have to show a lot of love to this offensive group because I think that was, mm-hmm. for me, the big question mark is how is this offensive group going to be able to produce? I was very questionable about Nick, uh, Nikolai Ehlers being able to be very consistent in the offensive zone. Uh, mm-hmm. Kyle Connor, uh, Kyle Connor struggled a little bit sometimes throughout the season with his offensive and goal scoring touch. What never faltered for me was the goaltending and the in the uh, D group in front of him. You can talk about uh, maybe them not chipping in offensively or jumping in on the rush, but in the defensive zone, they have a very solid blue line and they're very solid in front of Connor Hellebuck. Mark Shifley and Nikolai Ehlers has been absolutely phenomenal for this organization right now. Neil Pionk, like you said, a guy who. When you look at the stats, you know, maybe we didn't talk enough about him. He's been a perennial 30 to 40 plus uh, 30 to 40 point producer. But you look at the peripherals, 221 hits last year, 118 blocks, yeah. 146 shots. I've got him in net. both our leagues, I believe. And he has been fantastic for the blue line right now, alongside Josh Morrissey, of course. But what's really been outstanding is the amount of depth scoring they've been getting. Nino Niederreiter, Vladislav well Nemesikov, Mason Appleton, well Connor Miller, Colin, Colin Miller on the blue line with four points, Adam Lowry. All these mm-hmm. guys are chipping in. It's not just the top six forward group. Well Everyone said. is everyone's doing their part right now. So needed to highlight that. So it's been great. That's a big reason, you know, obviously a softer schedule, but big reason why they're 6-0-0. Everyone's chipping in right now. And we're going to chip in 
in the next episode or in the next I, segment I, with the big time bets. Is there anything you want to finish off before we wrap up and go to big time bets? Not at all. All I got to say is you <laughs> knocked that one right out of the park. It's the balance scoring. Neil Pionk just, you know, pump my tires up for a few more of my uh, <laughs> selected draft picks. Cole Perfetti starting to look real good. Your boy, he's um, coming back to you. A, he's coming back. You know what I said, Steele. If it wasn't this season, he's officially <laughs> off the my boy list. However, you're not. Take us to break. We got big time bets ready to roll, and I'm trying to keep this heater coming in hot. Nine games on the schedule. We'll get to that coming up next. But first, this episode is brought to you by Game Time. You shouldn't have to worry when buying tickets to your next big event. That's why Flip and I always use the Game Time app. It's the fastest and easiest way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you. They have a new feature called Game Time Picks that makes getting tickets for your favorite live events even easier game time is the only ticketing app that gives you complete peace of mind with your purchase save even more with exclusive in-app deals on select seats ahead of the game or the event download the game time app create an account and use code locked on nhl for 20 dollars off your first purchase again create an account use code locked on nhl for 20 dollars off download game time today last minute tickets lowest price guaranteed this episode is also brought to you by prize picks Prize Picks is America's number one daily fantasy sports app with over 5 million active uh, members. The goal is very simple. All you do is pick more or less on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings pour in all season long. It's the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. You can win a hundred times your money on prize picks with that, with as little as four correct picks. Austin Matthews, five plus shots, Connor Hellebuck, 30 plus saves, Kyle Connor, uh, two plus hits potentially. The possibilities are endless. Download the Prize Picks app today and use code Locked On NHL and get fifty dollars instantly when you play five dollars. That's code Locked On NHL to get fifty dollars instantly when you play five dollars. You don't even need to win to receive this bonus. It's guaranteed. Prize Picks run your game. And once again, thank you so much for making the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Pod your first listen every single day. Continue to hit the subscribe button, the follow button, leave a five star review. We appreciate all that love and support you show us Monday through Friday. We're going to show that love to you like we do at the end of every episode with Big Time Bets. Hopefully, we can get some money in everybody's pocket on Thursday night. Flip, mm. over to you, my friend, because mm. you're killing it to start off the season. And I actually have – I need your help on some of these picks. Okay. I have two options for these okay. games, so I want your input. But over yeah. to you, my friend. What are you looking at for Thursday night? I appreciate that. And I think I mentioned to you off air that I really do think that this is a tough board. Um, so I'm sitting at, for the record, I'm sitting at, oh, I'm trying to do this math quick. I'm at <laughs> eight, 18, six and oh, and I'm at a four, three and oh on the locks, 18, six and oh, to start the year steal. I'm going to be happy with all day long. So yeah, you always say <laughs> when you tee this up for me, I feel the pressure when you say it's over to me. <laughs> Um, I'm here to help always, and I'm here to spit this out for you as such. The Dallas Stars head into the Boston Bruins on the road here, and this one jumps off the page to me as an under. Swayman, Ottinger, two of the best in the business, two stingy, kind of honestly defensive-minded clubs that hang their hats on being very tough to play against. And when I look in the head-to-head, eight of the last 10 meetings between these two teams have gone under the number. So I'm going to take it up to six and a half. It's sitting right now, five and a half, six. I'm going to take it to six and a half, and I'm going to take it as my first pick and the under. To me, Steele, this one has it written all over it from the jump. I could see a tight checking one. I'm going to call it right now, three, two, four, two with the empty netter and under six and a half stars and Bruins. My first pick, that's under. The last handful of matches between Colorado and Arizona have gone over the number. And honestly, what I'm feeling the most here in this matchup, steal, and it's my lock of the night, it's the Nathan McKinnon prop. He has 12 points in seven games already this season, and I needed to bring this one up because he has owned the Arizona Coyotes, Utah Yeti, however you, the Clayton Kellers, <laughs> however you want to call them. 13 goals, 28 assists in 36 career regular season games. You know where I'm headed for this lock of the night. Give me the Nathan McKinnon anytime assist and put everything else that I said aside for a second and just ride with this one if you're not feeling the others. Mac Daddy is going to get at least one or two apples in this one. Utah started hot, but they've shown that they are just like every other team in this league steal beatable. Very much so. Eustace Anunin starting to get his, and this Colorado team's going to cook. So 
Give me the under six and a half in the Boston Dallas. Give me Colorado on the money line and give me Knack. Mac Daddy, anytime assist, that's my lock of the night. I love all three of those picks. I'm definitely going to have to parlay them, uh, those three picks together, maybe even add them into mine. Real quick, my record so far on the season, 15-9-0 and with, nice. uh, for my overall record and the lock record, 6-2-0. and So I'm really feeling the locks. That's my bread and butter right there, picking those winners for you. But mm-hmm. got to get those stats up a little bit higher, just like uh, my boy Flip over there. Real quickly, I need your input on these picks because – this is like you said, it's a tough board. It's definitely a tough yes, board, but these are some interesting picks I have here. First pick of the night. I'm looking at the wild Tampa Bay lightning game. Mm-hmm. There's two options. I have mm-hmm. wild on the money line at plus plus one twenty five, or I can go down the, uh, plus, uh, the puck line plus one and a half at minus minus one eighty five right now. And the reason why I have those two picks and I want your input, the wild they're six, three and one in their last 10 games against the Tampa Bay lightning. Mm-hmm. However, the caveat here. They've lost the last three matchups against the Lightning. It is in Tampa Bay. Uh, so that's the first pick, two picks, or the first mm-hmm. options of this game. The Wild money line at plus 125. You also got the puck line plus 1.5 at uh, minus 180 right now. Yep. Uh, that is the first option. What are you thinking about those? Considering the performances that I've seen from the Tampa Bay Lightning over the last three games, Disappointing against Ottawa, got filled in against Toronto, and if not for a really, really, really bad and kind of fluky performance from the New Jersey Devils, I think they could have probably been handed three L's. And then you're taking a look at many. Uh, I know St. Louis and Columbus, those two wins are whatever. But the neat and tidy 5-1, I'm going to go with the value of the Minnesota Wild on the money line here, Steele. Because I would prefer that angle than taking the plus 1.5 on the money line and getting torched. I'll take the value. I'll take the team that has looked a little bit more complete. And I'll take the hot hand in the cage as well with Philip Gustafson. And I'll take my value. And I know you're going to like those points. Absolutely love it. I'm going with the Wild on the money line then at plus 125. These are the next two options right here. It comes from Hit the me. Maple Leaf. It comes, comes from the Maple Leafs Blues game. You also have the Maple Leafs on the puck line at minus one and a half, plus one fourteen, or you can take the over six and a half in this matchup also at plus one fourteen right now. I think this is a good opportunity to either for either of these bets right now. Uh, obviously, Craig Brewer uh, going up against his former team. Mm-hmm, You're going to get mm-hmm. Anthony Solars back in the lineup, so I think that should help in the case of the puck line at minus one and a half. I think I'm feeling the puck line over uh, the over six and a half right now. So that's what Mm. I'm leaning to. And by the look of you, you're shaking your head. Yes. On the puck line as well. I personally think that if we're going to continue to read into the narrative that Craig Berube is going to be molding this team into a nasty bunch of mofos to play against, you know, sorry for the (laughs) kids listening out there. We keep it clean on this show, but if they're going to be a gnarly, nasty group to play against, you're not going to get, performances like they had against the Columbus Blue Jackets in back-to-back nights. Yeah. Look at Paul Maurice. Look at all of the coaches, Rob Brindamore, all of these club steel that we love and we know are going to be there at the end of the year. you got to follow up an embarrassing performance with a really, really good one. So I'm with you on that one. One hundo. Because I could also see with Stolarz cooking the way he is, I could see that going under the number. So I want to stay away from those angles, and I'm going to read into the one that you said the most so eloquently yourself. Let's go with the big bad Leafs on the money line, or on the puck line, sorry. On the puck line, there we go. Let's get picante spicy with it. Absolutely love it. Okay, three picks here in then. Wild on the money line, plus 125. Maple Leafs on the puck line, plus 114. And we're going with the uh, the remaining undefeated team right now. The Jets on the money line at minus 128 against the Seattle like Kraken. Absolutely cooking right now. Parlay that together. Maybe even throw all six of those picks if you're feeling real spicy with those, mm. uh, with flips picks over there. Those are the picks. Those are the lock of the night for Thursday. And thank you so much for making the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Pod your first listen every single day. Make sure Back. you go check out the Locked On NHL podcast where the season never ends. You can find it on the uh, in the description below so you don't have to search for it. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team. Every single day from both Flip and I wish you good luck with your weekly matchups, your bets tonight, and we shall see you back here again tomorrow.